you so much. What an absolute joy it is to be able to be here with you all tonight as we celebrate, truly celebrate, uh, this opening the dedication of the mural project here in the city of Woodstock. You know, when you think about the project that uh, has been described, we recognize it as kind of the quintessential representation of who we are as a city. We are creative, we are embracing, we are inclusive, and we are collaborative. And certainly, this project symbolizes and incorporates every single one of those qualities. Woodstock is unique. The idea for the mural started with the intermittent conversations I had with the Councilman R.B. Thompson. And it probably was over a period of a couple of years, he chatted about, he had this notion that the Pedway next to where the new movie theater is would be an ideal place for a mural. How do we bring the history to Woodstock and make it live? I thought we could have a mural here about the movies. So I said, that's a mural waiting to happen. But it occurred to me that somebody, who's going to take it on? Well, here I am. I'm a designer. I've been in the business for a long time. I know a lot about it. So we took it on. Hi, my name is Mark Adamani and I'm uh, from Rockford, Illinois. My company is Adamani Art and Design. My work can be found throughout nine states, primarily in northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin. I'm Terry Wilcoxon. I'm the Grants and Communications Manager for the City of Woodstock. I kind of have an idea of the different processes and approvals and people that need to be involved in a project of this size. My name is Sue Stelford and I'm an art historian. I teach at Columbia College. Hello, my name is John Puzo. I am uh, a retired bricklayer. My name is Tina Hill. I am a former county board member and former county board chairwoman. I obviously have an interest in art, which is why I wanted to get involved with this. My particular reason for getting involved though is I really enjoy the idea of public art. I started to get intrigued with the arts when I was on the county board. I got involved with the mural when Michael Standard asked me to help him fundraise for it. I initially got a call last August of 2016 from One Zero Charlie. I'd come in and met with them and they had introduced me to the project um, that was designed by Michael Standard. When Michael came and asked about this particular mural project, um, I loved it. It celebrates our history. It was something that the community could get behind. He was putting it in a pedway that, you know, would be an otherwise sort of boring walkway. It was a process. I think that's the first step that most people should know is that it wasn't just one quick ask and it was over. It was an entirely longer process than I thought it was going to be. We raised a huge amount of money, you know, and uh, you know that's not easy to do. We had to go through the city council and get approval. We had to go through Historic Preservation Commission and get approval. That required a public notice to be published in the newspaper. So there were a lot of little details involved in getting this project done. Getting permission from the building owner, getting the wall in shape, funding it, finding a brilliant painter, and then the committee working together just keep moving it forward, even when it was difficult and we bickered and we didn't agree on things, we got through to the other side and it, the result is uh, self-evident. So a steering committee was formed to put this project together to utilize the skills of several different people that were involved. Yeah, an amazing group of people that we made happen. With the cooperation of uh, Jeff from the city and the mayor's approval, we did it in a year, right on schedule. Michael contributed a tremendous amount of creative time and energy to this project and received absolutely no compensation for that whatsoever. 
I had over uh, 50 ideas on what to put in the wall. He reduced it to four, so it made it manageable and useful. He also got the best muralist possible. We put all these people together, and we were able to do something in less than a year's time that most people probably would take two or three years to put together. So we're pretty proud of what we've accomplished. Big issue, obviously, was getting the money. This was what's called a public-private partnership. One of the things that we are very proud of working for the city of Woodstock is the sense of community here. Because it was a public-private partnership, we were able to use some of the resources of the city, and at the same time, we raised all the money privately, as well as a grant from McHenry County Community Foundation. She wrote a grant that was compelling, that gave us a big chunk of money. Right off the bat, um, Willis Johnson, who is the owner of Classic Cinemas, including the Woodstock Theater here in town, they gave us the $10,000 donation. We knew we were on our way and that everybody else would take this project seriously as well. The biggest thing to get to the yes on a project like this is finding something about the project that would interest them, what's in it for them, why would it be important to them. Something that a lot of people could get behind and they could realize the benefits. Just the to talk about it, about the people stopping, about people coming from other communities to see it. One of the nice things about the Friends of the Opera House is that we're a 501c3 organization. So consequently, it's a tax-deductible organization, which is very attractive to people who are donating. And then it was just coming up with a list of people in the community that we could divvy up to make appointments with them or just calling them. A lot of times I just dropped in on them and then I would drop in again and again. You have to, they say you have to hit people 10 times, but I didn't, that would be annoying. Two or three times is all I have. And after a while we would come up with more names. As I was driving around town, I would be like, oh, I know that person. I, or if I didn't think I knew someone, but I thought they would give, then I'd find someone who knew them and could ask them. You know, the ads in the paper uh, brought in some donations, but it was really the one-on-one -on -one contact that did the work. The economy is still struggling. A lot of times you were able to tell them the other side that you still need beauty in the world. You still need hope. You make money, I think. So you can have beauty. You, you use money to get access to beauty. We were able to raise everything we needed for this project, which ended up being about $30,000 for the painting of the mural itself, about $50,000 for all of the other elements. The condition of the wall was a major problem, major problem that set us back. When the new theater was built, there were buildings torn down and it left essentially a 20 foot wide pathway that connected Main Street to Throop Street and it's next to the theater so it was self-evident where it should go. Where else could it go? The very first thing was getting permission from the building owner. The wall that the mural is on is on a building that was owned by a private individual who actually doesn't even live in town. So we had to get a hold of him and make sure we had his permission in writing before we could do anything else. And Terry Wilcox got the okay from the building. That was the first thing. Aside from having the city council buy into it. I do have a background in uh, construction so the area of the wall that we were going to be painting, two-thirds of that wall had been exposed after they tore a building down. So it was like where two walls had met. There's no stucco on it because there was an existing building there that was punched up right tight to it and they ripped that down. And so you're so going to make it so it matches the back of the park. Yes, we are. You know, when I first told them how much money we needed for it, 
a lot of it was as we had to improve the wall itself, they were a little shocked. I needed something visual to show them and explain the creative process and what needed to be done because we were asking for so much money. It was acceptable to Mark and he brought out a Sherman Williams representative who told us what type of primer paint to put on to take the paint that Mark was going to be putting on for the mural. Unfortunately, <laughs> new stucco really soaks up paint. So it ended up that it basically took three times the amount of paint as was suggested to us it was going to take. We spent a lot of time putting two to three coats on and when we were done it looked fantastic compared to what it looked like before the wall was even addressed at all. Pretty much his been an up and down year I guess in the planning stages with the committee and uh, the logistics of licensing to do some of the imagery on here. Michael Standard is the designer of the mural and so he owns the mural image itself but he did reuse images within that. So it was important to go get permissions from the people who own those. Chester Gould never owned his comic strip. It was always owned by the Tribune. Unlike Charles Schultz who drew Peanuts, or Watterson who does Calvin and Hobbes. He was an employee. Now he got paid very well. The Tribune owns it. So I chased that down and I got permission to use that. Orson Welles wasn't as big a deal because he's pretty much in public domain just because his work is so much older. Um, but we did have to go to the Chicago Tribune um, to get the Dick Tracy images. And then we had to go to Sony to get um, the Groundhog Day. And while I thought going to Sony and asking, you know, Sony for permission, that would be the end of it, um, I didn't realize that you needed third party uh, permissions as well. Two stuff were, went through, God bless her, to go to Sony Pictures to get authorization to use the Groundhog Day images. I kind of thought Sony would provide those. Having used them once, I, I would have thought that they would have gotten permission already from the individual artists, but we also had to get um, the director's permission, we had to get the writer's permission, and then we had to get the actors that were featured as well. Actors are not easy. You have to go to their lawyers or their agents, and most, most of the time both, to actually reach them. We all know about Groundhog Day. I think we're all fans of Bill Murray um, and some of his antics. Bill Murray is notoriously difficult to get a hold of. Bill Murray was the biggest challenge, and um, he actually, I don't think, has an agent. He has lawyers, and we repeatedly reached out to them over probably a six-month span. If you want to get hold of Bill Murray, you have to put like an ad in Variety, the Hollywood magazine, and pretty much say, Bill Murray, we want you to do a movie kind of thing, and then he would contact you. We did contact a bunch of companies that would actually get these permissions for you, and of course you would pay them for that. Um, but as soon as I said it was Bill Murray we were looking for, Two out of three said we're not interested because they know how hard he is to get a hold of and they weren't even interested in doing it even if we paid them. So, yeah, he was our challenge. <laughs> Michael did have a sort of backup drawing that he had in place um, because we were having problems with getting in touch with Bill Murray. Um, but we were all really excited that we ended up getting the original mural that we had looked at. Many of us have been amazed at the fact that for a town our size, which is just a little over 25,000, we've had four cultural legends that have gained national, if not international, fame. The topics would be Chester Gould, of course, our opera house, of course, Orson Welles, of course, and Ron Day, of course. The first part of the mural is dedicated to Chester Gould, and Chester Gould was the creator of Dick Tracy, the world-famous detective. Dick Tracy was a big thing for the kids back in the 50s, 60s, and um, Chester Gould had the Crime Stopper Cruiser Kids Club uh, that met at the Opera House on Thursday nights down in the basement. Chester Gould lived in Woodstock in the country for 50 years and drove back and forth 
to work at the Chicago Tribune Towers downtown almost every day. So it, it's he was quite an important part of this community. The second part of the mural is something we called Stars of the Opera House. The Opera House building was erected in 1889 and it started out actually being the city hall and the police station and the fire station and the library. So that building now is a year-round performing arts center. And it, it's just surrounded by the different the famous people that had played at the Opera House or had gotten their start at the Opera House. That stage is where Orson Welles performed his first play. Many, many, many famous people have been at the Opera House. And then Orson Welles, who spent his boyhood here. He was born in Kenosha and he was raised at the top school for boys and got his theatrical background here in Woodstock. Orson Welles is probably the most famous person that's ever come out of Woodstock. When he did the radio, War of the Worlds, scared the pants off everybody in the country because they thought the Martians were coming. And then he pretended, if I can say, that he was an innocent. He didn't realize that what he was doing. But I suspect he knew what he was doing the whole time. But a very precocious, brilliant, courageous guy. And then Orson Welles, uh, shortly thereafter, did Citizen Kane, which is known to be one of the best movies of all time. He was 24 years old. The last panel is about Groundhog Day, the movie, um, which was entirely filmed right here in Woodstock on the Woodstock Square with Bill Murray. And in one of the scenes, he's jumping out of the tower on the Opera House. So there's connection all the way around. So we wanted to memorialize these things and have the whole community feel that sense of pride. I had no idea how complex it would be. I had no idea. I've been involved with a number of civic projects over the years and uh, anytime you can celebrate a, a city's history it's great. It's great for morale. It's great for tourism, um, it's a great boost for any city that's trying to uh, form or um, be successful at completing a renaissance, so to speak. We identify areas of interest and need and then we work together to make good things happen and here we are tonight celebrating just that. The first piece that was done was the Dick Tracy part, you know, that was incredible. Like this is, you could say, this is going to be a powerful thing. So the more reality there was in the creation of the mural, the further it came along, the more people saw the vision of it, and the more people came on board to support it. I think it's important to help try to beautify your community. It's also important just to learn how to work with other people. You're working with people who have different goals and who have different priorities, and you have to be able to work within that um, to get the project done. The first thing that you should do is contact your city hall. If you ask around, you will be able to identify somebody that is passionate about the arts. The other thing is to ask around in your community and find people that sometimes are teachers or retired business people. They can also give your project a, a lot of credibility and help get it done. I came to make me appreciate public art and what it brings to the community not just aesthetically, but economic development-wise. And, and I think it still is an untapped resource. I, I think we sell it way short, and I've become a, a much bigger advocate for it. Especially now as people can walk down the mural and they're looking at it and Mark's sitting there painting and, and it just looks so fantastic. I think people are really realizing what an impact it's gonna make. It was a little frustrating at times, but I did have fun doing it. and. Uh... I can sit there and uh, drive by it for, you know, until I'm too old and say, I had a big part of making that happen. And uh, I'll be able to feel good about that. I see this as just a stepping stone. I would like to see a lot more artistic projects occur in the city of Woodstock.
sort of has an intangible benefit. It's not something that people would per se pay for when they come, but it's a reason to draw people here. After 61 days of painting over the last three months, two dozen gallons of paint, 15,000 questions, <laughs> and all 9,372 Opera House bricks. I've had the opportunity to paint literally hundreds of murals in my 25 year career, both civic, private, residential, you name it. And uh, none have had the impact that this one has had. What we have seen here is that there are opportunities that can come to fruition if we dedicate ourselves, if we decide, because it is a conscious decision to take a vision and make it our reality.